Hey everybody, I'm back here at my Eura Coffee Corner, and I'll tell you that while my wife predominantly or almost exclusively makes coffee, I almost exclusively make cappuccinos. And while there's no doubt it's worth the extra effort to set up the milk container and risk the coffee cup falling off the side of the machine on that platter that's way too small, one thing I hadn't considered was the ever-increasing cost of the milk frother cleaning supplies. What we're going to do is we're going to get into a little bit of Eura cost economics today and how you could clean your milk frother using the exact same supplies from Eura at a reduced cost without any compromise whatsoever. Because there should never be any compromise on the cleanliness of items that are used to prepare food. If in the end you don't feel comfortable doing this, that's fine too. But let's get started. A while back, I conducted a four-month review of this Eura S8 machine that replaced my S9. With it came Eura's standard milk cleaning system and 100 milliliters of the now being phased out liquid cleaner. I had demonstrated the markings for the liquid cleaner, pouring to this line at the bottom, and then topping off with water to the top line. But I only demoed it because it was supplied. Eura had already moved on to these cleaning pellets to replace the liquid solution even though in my opinion I find the liquid solution to be more effective. My LCD screen even has a picture of the pellets being used in the milk cleaning system. So just get some baseline numbers. The liquid cleaner that you could still get, the 1000 milliliter bottle, has 100 uses at 10 milliliters per use at $39 a bottle, cost about 39 cents per cleaning, and that's about one cleaning per day if you can use the coffee machine every day. Move over to a 180 gram pellet dispenser bottle for $50 that gets 60 uses. We're now looking at 83 cents per use. That's over double. You find a deal like this every now and again, but they're few and far between. When I bought that $50 bottle a couple of months ago, it was $38. And every time you use that milk frother, it reminds you to pay up. And when you hit start, it reminds you to pay up only the euro though. Let's observe the picture, as in the instructions, we put the metered crystals in, we fill the water all the way up to the line, and then we would run it. I want to stop for a minute and get a baseline though. How much water is that up to that line? So we're going to add it now, and I'm sure to be absolutely exact for our baseline measurement. And then I'll dump it into a measuring cup. This one is not the most accurate measuring cup, but it'll be good enough because we can see the amount of water is exactly 275 milliliters. We could get into how much the crystals actually displace later. So I'm going to run this frother cleaning regiment now. There's no cleaner in here. It's just the water up to that exact level. This is the first portion of the cleaning. I'm going to speed this up to four times. This is the pause that it does. I'm going to remove this. The second half of the cleaning portion sped up again four times. It now says add fresh water to the top line for the flush portion. But wait a minute. What about all the unused cleaner still sitting in this container that I'm about to dump into the sink and then refill with fresh water? Something seems wrong here. So I want to know how much is in this container, but I got to drain this container first. And I'm realizing after the fact that I probably could have used a turkey baster for this. Would have been a lot easier, but I ended up using wads of paper towels to accomplish this task. But the whole point was to just empty that back container, leaving the water untouched in the front container. And so we'll pour that water into our measuring cup and have a look. And I don't want to say 125 milliliters, but maybe 115 milliliters of unused product. That's 41.8% of your cleaning solution tossed in the trash. Or 35 cents each use tossed in the trash. And just to illustrate how this whole cleaning system was designed for the cleaning pitcher, and not the machine, it tells us to fill up the water level to the line again. I'll speed this portion of the process up, but we see that it only uses a fraction of the water that it asks for, with no regard to what the machine uses. Look how little water was used from the top line. Why don't they design the machines to use the mixture of cleaner and water for which is actually needed? I just can't figure it out. What could it be? And this is not of recent origin. Going back on machines I've had over 15 years, the same exact thing, given the quantity of water that would be added with the cleaning solution, the same amount of unused cleaner would be left behind. And all of that 
Wasted product just turns into money coming right out of your pocket into yours. So now I've subtracted the waste water from the recommended amount of water and then added a little bit more water to err on the side of caution and this is what I came up with. It doesn't have to be perfect on the first go around, but we're going to add it into the container now. And then we're going to run it again and we're going to see the kind of result we're going to get. Obviously I'm going to speed everything up and I'm going to remove the pause from the middle so we don't have to wait on it. We just want to see how much water we're left with when the process is done. And we could see in this test event adding that little extra left us right at the low mark by the time it finished. Quite an improvement. A small piece of cut duct tape could then be used to set the new mark. As we see here in this test, which I've sped up dramatically, making its way almost to the bottom of the bucket as we see here just some water. Now, had I gone and aligned the water level to the bottom of the tape instead of the top of the tape, it would have been perfect. Getting the right ratio of actual pellets based on the water reduction is a little bit more challenging. Let's give it a try. First, we need to figure out how many there are in each push. So I am going to actually go and count these out one by one. And I'm going to speed it up so you all don't have to watch this. And the first one turns out to be 84. The second one, 104. The third one, 100. And a fourth one, for good measure, also 100. Pretty consistent. But if 100 is used on 250, then we only need 58.2 pellets to be used on our new water level. And this comes out to one heaping, or just over one quarter teaspoon. Very easy. Checking the weight of each pour right quick. I want to see in grams. The first one, 3.05 grams. Very good. 3.07 grams. Very good. And his third one, three grams on the nose. I purposely filled the water slightly lower than the mark for the next test. And now finally, we're gonna add that heaping quarter teaspoon of pellets. The water level only moves trivially for this volume of pellets. And I'm speeding all this up considerably and it seems like half of the pellets will dissolve very quickly and the remainder of the pellets take several minutes to dissolve and you just have to wait on it. And we could see that as the machine starts running, the performance, the output is exactly the same as if you had used the full amount of cleaning pellets with the water level all the way at the top. Everything is working like normal, except you're not wasting about half of your money doing it. Now, what I also did here in this test, not only to demonstrate that it runs exactly the same, what happens if you put in accidentally just a little bit too little water, really nothing except it blows out a little bit of steam in the end, and yeah, that's basically about it. So generally I would have more water at my line, this wouldn't happen, but yeah, that's the end result. And we take a look and we see this part of the process, exact same cleaning, zero compromise, about half the money saved. As an add-on while we're still here, using the same volume of water, I am going to do a degree of compromise. And what we're going to do is we're going to use time and exposure instead of strength. So I'm going to take half of what we had. So now we're down to 20 or an eighth of a teaspoon, which I'm going to sort out now by hand first. There we go. Eighth of a teaspoon. Shake it up and I'm going to just put it right here in the water. Now, I don't know if those remnants that exist after two minutes are part of the solution or if they're a binding agent, but I definitely want to wait for everything to be dissolved. So I do wait a good five minutes. Let's get everything set up and run it like usual. Now we know that we're only running at half the strength given the amount of pellets out we'll put in. Everything seems to be okay. That's not a, a good measurement of success, obviously. But we're going to let it run its course for the first half. And we can see a good amount of suds in the pickup container and the reservoir side is empty. The hose right here is filled with the cleaning solution also in this unit and it is now asking for fresh water. But right now all this cleaning solution it's currently sitting in the milk frother and hose. So instead of running to change the water immediately why not wait five minutes. 
We can see the active ingredients in here include citric acid and carbonic acid. So exposure to the milk fats would allow them to break down over time. So a dilute solution could be as effective given more time. So I waited an absolute minimum of five minutes arbitrarily. And now I'll conduct the fresh water rinse as the second part of the cleaning. And I sped that up really fast and the rinse is now complete. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this apart, take the hose apart, and we're going to see how clean everything is. So we'll get this out of the way, remove the hose, remove the frother unit, and have a look. I need to take off the two couplers to access the actual hose. And I have a hose cleaner that we're going to be using for testing. So I'm going to clean the cleaner first and make sure it's perfectly clean to do this test. There's no dirt or anything on these bristles. So anything remaining in the hose should be pushed to the end or get caught in the bristles. And this is as far as it'll go. This hose is a bit long. So now I'll pull the brush out. And looking at the brush against the backdrop of the paper towel, I do not see anything on that brush. And looking at where the brush came up to on the hose, I see no accumulation of any matter at that location. So the hose was perfectly clean from this cleaning using only a quarter of the amount, but waiting several minutes before the rinse. So now we're gonna field strip the frothing unit, starting with this piece on the bottom, followed by this piece that snaps right off its rubber. And then this piece. And then the knob comes out. They're working it back and forth as I pull it out. There we go, five pieces. Looking at the knob first, we look in those galleys and passages and we see everything's clean. There's like these little tiny specks that are on the outside of those areas. But they're not in the passages where the milk goes and the cleaner goes. We look in here, we also see that that area is clean. There's no milk residue or slime or fat or whatnot. Grabbing this piece now, having a close inspection. Again, on this piece, I also do not see any residue or what have you. This as well also looks clean. No problems here. Flip it around and no problems here either. And the plastic cap also looking clean. The main unit, we take a look inside. I don't see any problems in here, nor on this side nor in this recess. So everything everything here looks good. And by the way, according to Yura, in addition to all the cleaning that we went over, you're supposed to do this dismantling every single day and clean it out and rinse it beyond everything we've done, as I'm showing here in the manual. So step two is to take it apart like this and get it even cleaner. Cleaner than I already have it right now using a quarter of the solution in the first step of the process. Think about that. How much cleaning solution do you really need to do this job? I hope you found this video on saving money, cleaning the Euro milk frothing system, enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below, helps me out a lot when you do, and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When the next video comes out in this series, a link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?